We start with our newsmaker segment and focus on politics and government in Kansas. And joining me is a man who is deeply involved with both. He's Chris Kobach, the Kansas Secretary of State and one of the leading contenders in the GOP gubernatorial primary. Mr. Secretary, welcome to Ruckus. Thank you for joining us. Great to be with you, Mike. Good to see you again. You have been the driving force behind a Kansas law requiring proof of citizenship to register to vote. That's been overturned by a federal judge. What happens now? Uh, it, the case is being appealed to the Tenth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. Uh, and by the way, Kansas is one of four states that requires proof of citizenship. And really, I think all states should be doing this because there are so many non-citizens voting. But just to give you a sense of where this decision is coming from, uh, the judge, she ruled that it was unconstitutional for a state to require proof of citizenship. And that's a really big stretch, such a stretch that the Ninth Circuit the crazy Ninth Circuit out in California, they were presented with that same argument 10 years ago in an Arizona case, and they didn't buy it. They rejected the idea that it was unconstitutional. So I, she, she's taken a pretty extreme view of the law, in my opinion. I think the Tenth Circuit is likely to overturn that holding. I certainly hope but so. But in the meantime, someone wants to register to vote yeah, for the in, first time in, can in, just go in and register? In the meantime, our proof of citizenship requirement is suspended. So you can just check the box, I'm a U.S. citizen, sign your name, and. And, and, and go on, and, and that was not Will stopping. anybody check after the fact? No, there's no meaningful way to check. Okay. The, the only way to, I mean, there, if we got external information then, which is very rare, you might be able to check, but that's the reason you need to have a, a, a process at the front end. All right, that federal judge, Julie Robinson, who overturned the voting law, sanctioned you and told you to go to six days of legal training to learn more about civil procedure. Is that as it struck me, an unusual action by a it's, judge? It's extremely unusual. I've never heard of that happening. Do you before. think you it deserve was, it was six that? six hours, not six days. <laughs> no, did I say six <laughs> days? Did. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. six hours. Yeah, uh, it's part of, well, we, we have annual CLE, yeah. continuing legal education, all attorneys do, and she gave me an extra six hours, but very strange. I've never heard of that. Before. Do you think you deserve that sanction? <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, your critics say that one of the things you talk about is vote fraud, and yet you have little evidence to prove that there is vote fraud. Do you have evidence of vote fraud? Tons of evidence. And the thing with the critics is they, they don't want photo ID. They don't want proof of citizenship. So as much evidence as you give them, it's never enough. We presented to the court 127 identifiable cases of aliens who either successfully registered or tried to register in Kansas. And our expert witness said the number could be higher than 33,000 because you only see the tip of the iceberg. And, you know, you, we present how, just a, how big the problem is, and the left will say, oh, that's not enough. You've got to show us more voter fraud before we take this problem seriously. Is there any amount of vote fraud that's acceptable? No, not in my book. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, every time someone votes fraudulently, yeah, yeah. they cancel out your vote, they cancel out my vote. Kansas produced a budget surplus of $318 million in the fiscal year that just ended. Does that mean the increased income tax law worked or that taxpayers no. too, paid too much or what, something else? What happened is the, uh, the revenues exceeded projections, and so the projections were flawed. Kansas is actually still in the dumps economically. We're 41st out of 50 in, in growth, and we were one of only three states that had negative growth in 2017. So it's not like our, revenue, our economy's roaring. It's, it's still in the tank. It just meant that the way they predicted the revenue was off. We should have never had that income tax hike, and I would have vetoed it. Uh, so if you become governor, you'll ask for an income tax cut? Yes, absolutely. Um, we Now that we're seeing that the, the shortfall that they thought was there isn't as great. And furthermore, we got the Trump tax cut, which created this windfall for the state. And it should have been passed on to uh, Kansas taxpayers, but it wasn't. So I'll be fighting for that. I'm the only candidate in this race, Mike, and I think this is unusual. I'm the only candidate in the Republican primary who has signed the no tax hike pledge. Normally, Everybody signs it. I think most analysts agree that you and Governor Collier are the top two contenders in the GOP gubernatorial race. Mm -hmm. Both Republicans, both call yourselves conservative. What would you say to voters is the quintessential difference? There are two big differences. One is that uh, Jeff is more of a tax and spend Republican. He just signed a $545 million spending increase. He won't pledge not to hike taxes. I, on the other hand, have said I would have vetoed that and I I'm trying to cut taxes. So there's one big difference. The other big difference I would say is on illegal immigration. Uh, as you know, I've been fighting on that issue for many years, represented states like Arizona and, and cities like Fremont, Nebraska. Uh, and we're going to stop sanctuary cities. We're going to stop in-state tuition for legal aliens, require businesses to use E-Verify, uh, have better cooperation between the Highway Patrol and ICE. Collier, on the other hand, is more status quo. 
he had the opportunity to push for these bills in the last session and he refu refused to do it. Very quickly, final question. Would you support the amendment to take away the Supreme Court of the state's ability to determine how much money is necessary for school finance? I would absolutely support that. Look, the decision about how much money to spend, whether it's on schools or anything else, belongs with the representatives of the people, not with unelected Mr. judges. Mr. Secretary, we have to stop it there. Thanks very much for coming in. Great to see you again. Good luck in the campaign. Thank you. My pleasure. That is Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.